up and welcome to this candlelight AMA which is Ask Me Anything and my name is Demon Stealer and I'm the frontman of the band Demonic Resurrection. Thank you all for your questions. I'm going to do my best to answer them now. The first question I have is from Anil Carrier and he asked, where do you envisage the Indian metal scene 10 years from now? Well, it's really hard to say the Indian metal scene has been growing at a very steady pace and in 10 years, I'm at least hoping that we have a good solid touring network. Uh, right now, just something as simple as going to a concert, irrespective of the genre, is not a common thing to do. Therefore, we have a shortage of music venues and therefore even lesser venues for metal. So that is my biggest hope, that we have a solid touring base, uh, enough club sh clubs that we can have gigs at and also enough festivals. So that is the 10-year plan and the 10-year dream, so to speak. Next up, I have a question from Chintu Kalita and he asks, how do you feel about representing India in the big metal festivals? How is the overall experience? Well, we haven't played that many to be very honest. I mean, we played Sonosphere, Brutal Assault, uh, Bloodstock, uh, Wakin and uh, Lesfest and uh, Inferno Festival in Norway. And the experience at all festivals has been amazing. I mean, uh, you know, we don't think so much about we're representing India and all that. We just want to go out there and play our best possible show. And, you know, keeping that in mind, we give 110% at every festival. And I would say the reaction has been amazing. You know, we've got great support from people at the festival, great feedback. And, you know, you see people headbanging and moshing at the gigs and that I think kind of says it all. So next, I have a question from Clo Marionette Headlong. And she asks, is music your full-time job or do you do other things? Well, yes, uh, you know, being in a metal band is not easy. It's not very financially rewarding. And especially being from India where you have a 4,000 euro expense every time you need to play a show in Europe, it's it's quite difficult to manage that financially by just being a metal musician. So yes, uh, I do have a day job. I work with a company called Fatado's Music as their artist relations and social media manager. And that's my day job and that's kind of what helps pay the bill. I also produce and record bands in my studio. So that is another uh, thing I do on the side. And that's my day job. My next question is from Shubhankar Mahajan who says, How do I manage to record without throwing tons of money? I don't have sufficient money to record an album. Is there a way? I'm 18 and I look up to you as an idol. Thank you for the kind words, Shubhankar. Uh, so it's really simple. Obviously, when you start out as a musician, your first album, unless you are really rich, you're not going to record in a multi-million dollar studio. But what you can do is for a very nominal price, get a very basic home recording setup with a couple of softwares you know you get so many free softwares uh, just download something like reaper as your daw maybe buy a pack of easy drummer and you know get yourself a guitar and a processor and you're good to start recording uh, that's kind of how i recorded the first dr album you know i had a software called entrax studio and that I downloaded for free and I think I use Fruity Loops the free edition. So you make do with what you have and obviously as you grow older you will start earning money as you get a job and that will sort of fund your passion for music. So I guess that is the best way to start out and you know you think now that yeah okay this is my first album it's got to be amazing but after the first album is done you're just going to be like I have another album ready and I want to do that and you know each album is going to get uh, better and you're going to want to do much more so don't worry just start somewhere but get the ball rolling so next i have a question from abir haroon he says when are you guys going to perform in bangladesh uh you know we've heard that question a lot and the day we get a decent offer from bangladesh we'll come and we'll perform for you guys because we are dying to come and play there i have a lot of friends in bangladesh and the scene that i hear is great so we're really looking forward to it if it can happen Next, I have a question from George Hutty, who says, You guys did a free gig at the Unicorn London a while back after a UK festival. Any UK tour plans and how do the UK and India crowds compare? Well, George, I gotta let you know, we played Bloodstock in 2012. And after that, we played that London gig, which you're talking about. But then we came back last year and we played Sonosphere and we did 11 shows in the UK. We did London, we did Newcastle, we did uh, Scotland, we did, I mean, we went all over the damn place. <laughs> so, 
stay updated on our facebook page and yes we are coming back to the uk this year it should be in the middle of july and hopefully yes there will be a london show as well and i really do hope to see you at the gig come and say hi mohit sadhana says sir do you even doom what are your thoughts of the genre favorite artists etc well mohit i do doom sometimes but i don't doom too much so uh, I don't know, does Satanist count as a doom metal band because I really like their music? Anathema, maybe old Anathema, I like that too. Uh, there are a couple of bands here and there. Uh, India has quite a, uh, a good upcoming doom metal scene. There are a lot of bands, Shepherd, uh, Bevarsi, uh, Gin and Mr. Tonic, uh, all of them doing really well. So yeah, uh, I do doom a little but I don't doom too much. Puneet Gurang asks, what is your age now? Well, I am 32 years old and I will be 33 in a couple of months. Anurag Thapa asks, what is the lyrical concept of the new album? Okay, so the new album is basically a story. Uh, it started out with us wanting to tell the story of Ravan, the demon king, uh, and sort of saying it through his eyes. But, you know, I wasn't so keen on that and I kind of felt that I wanted to write my own story. So, the album basically is a story i've written sort of loosely based on the character of ravan that exists in indian mythology uh, the story starts off with the assassination of the king who rules over the earth you know then there's obviously the songs in sequence order which each are a chapter to that story i'd say read the lyrics once try and imagine the story in your head and just see what happens at the end and let me know what you think all right my next question is from bruticus Ethal, I hope I said that correctly. It says, what is the main focus for Indian death metal? Is it history, human conditions, philosophy, go, romance, war, poetry, and why is it that Indian death metal is so awesome and yet it is just now coming around to being noticed? Well, I think each Indian death metal band has their own unique subjects on which they choose to write. It is pretty much everything that you mentioned there. You know, some will talk about uh, you know human conditions, some philosophy, some gore, some poetry, maybe some war so each band is unique that way and why it is not noticed yet well i guess that's our scene in general is 30 years behind the rest of the world you know we had bands pretty much playing covers for the larger part of the time that the scene has existed it's only around 2003 2004 that the cover scene just completely vanished and it was bands just playing original music so i guess that is the reason why our scene has still not been noticed yet but I don't think it'll be too long. You know, if people like you out there are listening to the music, spreading the word of Indian metal, then it will go far and wide. My last question is a really, 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 really long one. And it's from Yasasvi Kashyap. So he says, you started when you were 17 and been doing it for 15 years now, means you are 32 years old. So Sahil Makija, I am pretty sure times were rough in between. 15 fucking years. Band members quitting, getting to be liked by your city, which you have many a time mentioned, betrayed you or something along those lines. Not getting the kind of recognition your work deserves, etc, etc, etc. And then for the most part, although you seem to have alternative sources of income from Fataros and Headbangers, Raso, you primarily market yourself as a frontman of Demonic Resurrection. How, dude? How? How the fuck, bitch, did you manage? You've been at it half your life now. I can only see severe conviction, self-belief, flexibility on the presentation, but totally headstrong and stubborn on the inside. Can you share what were your measures during your fucked up times? What was is your approach? How do you move on when things stay fucked? Also, pray tell what has the city Mumbai aired against you? Is the municipality or the demography? What evil blasphemy have they committed against thy demonic supremacy? Oh my God, that was long. Okay. So first, let's start about Mumbai. I don't know, but it seems to me that a lot of Indian people have what we call the crab mentality. It's like my favorite band is not doing well. Therefore, instead of working hard and promoting the band I like, I need to pull down XYZ band. And when that happens, my favorite band will become famous, popular or whatever. And I think it is that mentality that specifically Bombay, because we've always had this one band or these two bands, and it's not the bands, it's the fans of the band who have issues with DR. And it's not about liking or disliking our music, it's that they actually come to our shows and try and disrupt the show by either heckling us or troubling members of the audience. Because DR in is one of those bands that most of the young metalheads first discover and we do have a very young audience at our shows in Mumbai so they often get bullied by these people and that's not cool and which is why I have often spoken against this you know publicly 
Uh, however, thankfully, these people have sort of changed their attitude and we haven't had an issue for a while. And hopefully it shall remain this way for a while. Now to answer the other part of your question, which is how do you manage with the struggle? Uh, I guess for me personally, I just do not want to do anything else. And I have a lot of hope that this will work out and will pay off someday. And I guess without hope, yeah, you can't continue. Also, I've kind of dedicated my life to it and I've not really given myself too many other avenues uh, which I can sort of fall back on. And I guess that has also motivated me to keep doing this. You know, uh, I don't have a college degree. I'm pretty much stuck in the music business. And if I'm in the music business, you know what? I'm going to make music. So even if I do get a proper day job, have the bills paying, DR is going to live on for as long as I can probably keep it going. So that's all the questions you guys have asked me. Thank you so much for your questions. So feel free to contact me on Facebook and stay in touch. I'll be happy to answer any more questions that you have. Thank you guys. Cheers and stay demonic.